walk step by step, yeah. but I'm on a different page. Hey guys, welcome back to another little mini chit chat video. So before we go ahead and get into today's topic, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Please go ahead and consider subscribing, joining the family. We'd love to have you guys. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for doing so. We appreciate the support. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. So good morning, everyone. Um, happy Saturday. It is super early in the morning. Um, we just finished breakfast and all that good stuff. So I wanted to go ahead and react to um, this story. Um, I did a little bit of a reaction to it before, but I don't think I ever really went in depth on the kind of background um, subject of the whole situation. So earlier this morning, I was watching Kiki's Tea. I'm going to leave the link to her channel in the description. You guys can go over there and check out the full um, video. So she was reacting to the 21 Savage um, divorce situation. And so I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, it seems like his marriage was a business arrangement for the purpose of securing a green card and an American citizenship, right? So, um, so that's in, that's a whole, that's a whole, that's kind of like where I want to focus. So we're going to talk about business marriages versus I'm going to help you out. Um, a lot of people may not be aware um, of this particular arrangement, um, which is pretty common, um, especially in, uh, well, I want to say, I want I won't say in my community, um, I can only speak from what I know of, but I do know of other cultures and other people who have entered into these type of arrangements as well. So it's not really, um, particularly a cultural thing, but it is something that is prevalent in my community. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, America, England, Canada, these countries traditionally have a very, um, rigid immigration system, which means it's not easy to immigrate to these countries. Um, America being over the years, ever since the whole, um, you know, 9-11 situation, getting into the United States is not as easy as it used to be. Um, there are a lot of countries that now require visa for entry just to even come in and like for a weekend. I'm talking like even at the Canadian border, we share with the United States of which we share a few borders. Um, <clears throat> the Peace Bridge, for instance, going into um, Niagara Falls, New York, just crossing over from Niagara Falls, Canada, you're entering to you cross over the bridge and you're in America. Right. Um, even to walk over that bridge, if you're not a Canadian citizen and you're not on the list of countries that are exempted, which um, for the most part don't include any of the Caribbean countries or a lot of the African countries, um, you're going to need a visa to get into the United States. So for a lot of people who, you know, want to live and work in the United States, <clears throat> excuse me, the easiest path to doing that is to marry an American citizen. Now, we've all seen 90 Day Fiance. We've all seen these type of, we've all seen it, right? So these things happen. This is what, this is reality. People enter into these type of arrangements all the time. So when you're entering into a business marriage, traditionally, there would be like an exchange of funds, right? Um, by the way, I'm not saying this is right or legal, um, but people do it, right? Um, that's what I'm saying. So usually when you're doing that, you would be paying some type of fee, like the person who is marrying you would be charging you a fee. 
and um, you'd be paying that plus, you know, all your legal expenses to do all your lab work, all that type of stuff. It is not a journey for the light of heart. It is very difficult, very expensive, and it can be very tricky as 21 Savage is now finding out if you don't do it properly. Um, so, okay, usually, so like I said, there's an exchange, there's a fee. There's some type of contract drawn up, right, between the individual and the party that's doing the marriage, the sponsoring, all of that, right? Um, dot all your I's, cross all your T's. If you don't, you end up on the other side, which is, I'm helping you out. I'm helping you out comes with strings, comes with a whole bunch. It comes with no guarantee. It comes with no safety net. It comes with nothing. Um, you guys know the law is tricky, right? There's always loopholes to everything. For instance, I'll give you an example. Um, in Canada, we have like, a, it's like a nanny. It's like a nanny or um, live-in helper program done through immigration where a lot of um, women from certain countries like the Philippines, um, certain African countries, wherever have you, they can come here and work as a live-in home care provider, helper, nanny, whatever the case may be, and that will be their pathway to um, becoming a permanent resident, then becoming a citizen, right? So it's kind of like a work, it's like a work visa with a pathway to staying here. So over the years, um, when this program was, you know, first implemented and stuff like that, there was no protection for the women who were taking part in these programs. So basically, they would come here to do this job and while doing the job there would be like they would be assaulted verbally physically sexually and they couldn't say anything they wouldn't be able to report their host because of a fear of the person could revoke their their visa they can revoke their permit and they would be deported back to where they came from so a lot of women suffered years of abuse in silence so they can get their permanent card, permanent resident card. Um, after multiple cases eventually made its way to the media, it started to shine a light on that very dark underbelly of that particular um, immigration process. And laws were put in place that protect women now who come forward with allegations of abuse. And um, they're now prosecuting people who sponsor people and abuse them so that's just kind of like one area you know where your life is kind of in the hands of someone else and if there's nothing put in place to protect you they can take advantage of you right um <clears throat> okay so excuse me so that's the whole you know um kind of straightforward business cash exchange for service type of situation. Um, usually in that situation, there is no, um, there is no like intimacy. There is no, there is strictly a business transaction. And once again, before the laws changed, because people were abusing this particular system, you know, getting married and to get their green card or getting married to get their Canadian citizenship or to go to the UK or whatever have you, um, a lot of people were doing this. A lot of people immigrated to these countries through this process, right? This is a known fact. Um, and you didn't even have to live together back in the day. You could just, you know, marry the person and you guys go your separate ways you meet up when it's time to go in and meet with immigration. You fill out the paperwork. You go your separate ways. And you do that until the process is done and you get your papers, right? And then you go your separate ways. It's a business transaction. Um, and that, you know, traditionally was how it was done. 
But over the years, again, the government cracked down on the abuse of that particular tool. And now you had to live together. They were home visits. They would pop up. They would, um, there are certain cases where um, they would bring you in to do a test to see, you know, how well you know your partner, different type of things to kind of catch you if you're doing this kind of fraudulent uh, method, right? Um, there is a popular movie with Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds where um she uh wanted to get canadian citizenship and so she went to live with him and his family um and it was like a whole it's a whole thing if you've seen the movie then you know they had to go in and do the quiz they test them they ask them questions that you should know about your partner um their favorite food favorite this where were they born different type of things to kind of trip you up and see if you're, you know, see if you actually really know this person or you're get you, you know, you're just doing a business transaction, which is, by the way, again, I want to point out illegal. Um, okay. So that's the business end of it, right? Now we're going to talk about like the 21 Savage situation, which is kind of like what you're seeing play out in social media, in the media, right? There's clearly like, it's one of these, you know, I'll do your solid. I'll help you out. You know, I'll help you stay in the country, da, 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 da. And let's just go ahead and get married. You know, in good faith. This is, I'm going to help you out in good faith, all that type of stuff. Um, and kind of like, that's how it starts out, right? So from the get go, I'm going to go ahead and say, this is the worst method right? This is the worst method because it always starts out with, you know, we're just doing this for this purpose, but then it changes because you involve intimacy. Now you're living together. Now reality and fantasy kind of become one. And over time, the children start coming, right? So now things are very much real. And it's always more so on the woman's side. I just want to put that out there, right? Um, a lot of the times, you know, the guy, he's still intact with the whole arrangement. You know, he's just enjoying the perks of the situation. That's how sometimes men look at these type of situations. It's very black and white for them. Women, it's very black, white, gray, and in between, right? Things get complicated when feelings get involved. Um, guys are more able to kind of compartmentalize their feelings in terms of, okay, we start out, we're, you said this was what we're doing, so this is what we're doing. Um, women more think along the line of, well, you know, we're sleeping together, so obviously you must know more is involved. Not necessarily. Guys don't normally think that way right? They're enjoying, I'm so, like I said, the, um, the perks of the situation, right? It's like, if you choose to sleep with me, that's cool. That's a bonus. If you choose to do all this other stuff, that's a bonus. I will enjoy it in the moment, but they're always in that frame of mind of this is what we're doing. Now that leads to Tons of complications, obviously, right? Um, over time, the guy could start to rationalize things, right? Like, okay, you're doing this for me. I'm going to do you a solid because I see this is what you want. You want a family. You want a home. You want the children. You want all of that. I can provide that. Like, it's like a job, you know, you clock in and clock out. So I can provide that at this time of the day. I can be this to you. I can do that. I can do all these things. However, there is a time where I clock out and I take some time to do me. You know, it's my day off <laughs> type of vibe. And in that time and space, they're living a completely different lifestyle, guilt free. Because in their mind... You know, they're giving you what you want. So, you know, 
out of the whole arrangement. And I'm, you know, why can't you give me what I want type of vibe? So if you had a female who was okay with, you know, living the open marriage and the double lifestyle, that would be cool. You know, do you just make sure you show up to do this, 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 and this. And some people um, do live that type of lifestyle, right? However, in this case, I don't think his wife, um, Kiana, signed up for that. I think she signed up for eventually over time, we're going to make this permanent, right? Like, I thought we had an understanding like that you, you know, we're, we're, we're sleeping together. We're having children. We're building a home. It's a family. We're married. So at some point it went from, you know, I'm going to do you this favor. I'm going to help you out with feelings. I'm not going to say she didn't because usually women have to have some type of connection in order to even go along with something like that. Right. Right. I'm going to help you out. It changed to let's make this permanent. However, on his end, clearly it was, um, I can do both. I can walk and chew gum at the same time. I can do the husband thing over here and I can do the single guy, you know, dating the hot rapper chick over here and keep it separate. What he didn't understand is women are super emotional. That stuff never lasts for long. Somebody catches feelings and somebody gets in their feelings. So, excuse me, clearly Lotto um, caught feelings. I mean, if the whole government name tattered behind the ears wasn't a dead giveaway. Um, that's That's when she's tired of playing the in the dark stuff. First, you denied her in the interview. Okay, so now she take it up a notch because this has been going on for years. So at some point, everybody who enters into these type of situation has an end game. There comes a point where they start saying, okay, what's it going to be? Who is it going to be? You need to make a choice. Right. And then the guy is kind of stuck because now he's in too deep. Right. Living the double life been enjoying the perks of both lives you know going on vacations over here doing him in the in the media and all that stuff being the rapper guy and then over here he was going on like secret romantic dates doing the family guy thing so he was having best of both worlds unfortunately the two women involved wanted each other exed out and he couldn't do it and didn't do it fast enough So here we are. Now you're in a situation where um, a woman's hurt. You know, everybody on social media is kind of on her side because this has been going on for months. Um, Lotto has been throwing the relationship in the wife's face. And so it's at that point you back her into a corner and you force her to act. Right. I think the tattoo behind the ears was kind of like the last straw that broke the camel's back and she was over it. Now, you can look at it from multiple standpoints. Okay, you can say, well, you knew what you were getting into, um, but we don't know. We weren't there. And I got to tell you, um, I've seen these situations up hand, close and personal. Right. Um, People fall in love. People catch feelings and people get hurt, right? People have expectations and they don't, they they slowly come to a realization that what they envisioned is not the reality. So, you know, you enter into these things with the hope that, you know, over time, the person will come to either love you the way you want um, you know, settle into the situation and let it flow. Just let it become a permanent thing. Just be married. Um, and you know, that's the hope. So the reality is much different though. And that's the part where it's like, 
That's why I say I wouldn't recommend this method because someone always gets hurt in the end when there is strings attached and people catch feelings. Um, so I can understand her divorcing him, right? Because she didn't sign up for the mistress. That was not her agreement with herself. So um, it's a little mixture of both. People want to say, you know, some people are saying, you know, she's petty and stuff like that. He's saying she's petty, um, according to the video I watched. She's saying He's saying she's petty for doing it. She's trying to ruin his life. That's kind of a little bit narcissistic to say. Um, it shows that you don't even take her feelings into account, which is probably why you were able to do it for years without thinking that she would ever get fed up. Right. That's very narcissistic, very self-centered, um, very much not able to empathize and see things from other people's point of view. Right. Well, we had an arrangement. So, you know, somebody give you a certain amount of years of their life and kids and all of that. It, it, it blurred. The lines blurred years ago. So, you know. Um, it is what it is at this point because there was multiple opportunities according to reports on social media. She had given him multiple chances to end the relationship and he was not able to walk away. So I think, you know what? They call it a day. It didn't work out. You were not able to come through on your end. Um, you were not able to meet expectations and she's not able to be the type of wife you want her to be just kind of behind the scenes quiet and take all the 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 rest of it so she's clearly not built that way so what is best to do then get divorced you know if you and lotto really really you know are into each other the way you were during the whole affair then you should have no problems getting married she should want to marry you keep you in the country you know, do whatever you have to do uh, legally and get that process going. If it's true love and it's what it's supposed to be, then it will all work out in the end. Put her to the test. Will she Will she do that for him? Marry him to keep him in the country? Or would she marry him, period? Even if it's not to keep him in the country. I won't put that out there on them. But I'm going to say, even... Would you marry him? Because clearly you wanted him so badly, right? You tattooed him on the back of your ears and all of that. So truly you love him. So you shouldn't have no problem wanting to get married. That's the whole point of wanting him to leave his wife, right? To be with you. So I would go ahead and, you know, let them have at it. But I would extricate myself from the situation and move on with my life, which is what she seems to be doing as reports are saying. Um, so we'll see how that plays out for him. It always depends on how far along you are in your process and what the situation is. Now, you know, adultery is grounds for a divorce. <laughs> I mean, it's all over social media. You kind of, that's what happens when you put everything on social media and people find out your business. It's all over the place. So it's not hard for her lawyer to kind of get evidence of you you know, not standing up to your vows, all that other stuff. So that stuff gets messy, um, which is why I say I would not recommend the whole, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to do you a solid or a favor or whatever the case may be. That type of stuff always ends in um, disaster, <laughs> um, unfortunately. So that's kind of like my my take on the whole situation. I just wanted to kind of break it down a little bit. Um, some people really don't understand the whole marriage business thing. Um, a lot of people understand arranged marriages, um, but not so much the business marriage part. Um, it's not something that people really talk about. It's very much, you know, um, if you know, you know type of thing. And, you know, it is what it is. It is part of life. And so, yeah. So let me know what you guys think about that whole situation. Do you guys feel like 21 Savage wife Kiana is right to go ahead and divorce him? Um, because him and Lotto have been carrying on, 
you know, in front of her face, not even behind her back, in front of her face for months. Um, so do you feel she's justified in pulling his, um, his, um, what would you call it? Pulling his visa or revoking his green card or whatever the case may be that she's doing, divorcing him, which is going to kind of put a halt to his immigration process. Um, and there is talk that he may be deported. So um, let me know how you guys feel about that in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch up with you guys in another video. Stay up and stay blessed. Deuces.